Hey guys, I'm Leo. I'm Frank. And welcome to a brand new episode of Terror Recollect. Hey guys, this is episode two of Terror Recollect. Thank you for watching. Yes, both of you, the two of you that watched last week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. As promised, guys, uh, in this episode, we're going to be recapping our experience at the most recent Monster Palooza convention. As well as looking at our experience at the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5 screening in Hollywood, California at the Chinese Theater. So let's get right into it. So this is the Pasadena Convention Center. This is where the big monster paloozas have been held for at least the last couple of years. And this is where the Halloween 40th anniversary was yes. held also. The 35th <laughs> was on the other side of the convention center and this one was held at this exact location here. Yeah, these are really cool. But uh, doing the museum, that was like one of the coolest parts because some of these uh, these these statues and things like that were so freaking realistic. And a, a big thing, I I I'm a big collector of life size stuff. So this was almost like you know, hey, hashtag goals. Yeah. Of uh, you know, would love <laughs> to have a basement or a warehouse or something full of this stuff and be able to exp uh, display it. These are actual uh, screen used, uh, well that's I think a, a makeup bust, but these are actual screen used Chucky and Tiffany mm -hmm. from uh, Bride of Chucky. Yeah, and this Michael Myers, this, this Michael Myers statue was incredibly realistic. Yeah, it looked great. It was, it was made by the same guy who did the mask and the makeup effects for uh, the 2018 yeah. Halloween. And, and these were amazing too. The, uh, what, who's the artist on these? Uh, Elsa Neary, yeah. and these are available for sale. I only say that because it's in my head to want to buy this exact one and uh, put it in my living room. Make sure everyone sees it when they walk in. And these are uh, also screen used items from Planet of the Apes. Uh, this was listed as a Profiles in History's display. So all of this is screen used stuff from maybe the, at least maybe the first two or three uh, Planet of the Apes movies. I think it was actually really, really big in person. Yeah, so was that. that was yeah, huge. this was the size of a person or larger. <clears throat> and the poltergeist, poltergeist clown, mm -hmm. of course. A lot of thing, a lot of uh, people's fears. <laughs> and this, yeah, this massive. this guy was massive. Yeah. He was incredibly large, but it was really cool too. As great as Leo's camera is <laughs> that he's filming this on, it doesn't quite do it justice. I mean, when you're seeing them in person. Oh yeah. The sheer size of some of these things are... And the detail even to try to get up close and see and... Some of the, yeah, more than anything is just the detail. The detail is amazing on a lot of these and... The way the museum is set up, you know, you're all blacked out and then you have specific lighting mm -hmm. on each one so you get to see it all, all the... Lot, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And these are some of the coolest ones. Like, that looks just like Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Dorothy was, maybe not as much, but yeah. Scarecrow and Tin Man... And Very lion, definitely. Yeah. Lion definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know lion's sharp. like your favorite, right? Lion is my favorite. Mm -hmm. The cowardly lion <clears throat> always have a place in my heart. And there's one of Frank's favorite movies, Star Wars. That's a joke. He doesn't like Star Wars at all. So this is <laughs> um, me and my son. We, uh, My son is three years old. And one of my uh, goals in life when I found out I was having a son was like, oh, man, he's going to be in the horror. He's, he's got to be in the horror. And look at him now. Um, he loves Michael Myers. He loves Jason, Freddy. So being able to cosplay with him is was like a dream come true for me. That is awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's got the face down. Look at that. Look at those squinty eyes. He's about to slaughter his sister if he had one <laughs> right now. He definitely gets into character. Oh, he and does. He does what he needs to do. Like cosplayers even stopping to take photos with us. It was kind of cool. That's cool. It's a little family reunion yeah. photo, too. You have three different versions of Michael. Yeah. So that's really cool. Then you have Lori yeah. there. Yeah. And it's funny when, <clears throat> when people stop and they're like, you can hear them in this video, I think. 
Oh, he's so cute. He's sitting there holding an 18-inch bloody ass <laughs> lamps and knife. Exactly, and that just goes to show the people that come to these conventions and like to uh, the people that come to these conventions and like to check them out. I mean, they're they're people who who really enjoy the horror genre, and to them. Seeing a little three-year-old boy holding a knife half the size of ham <laughs> covered in uh, stage blood is cute. So mm -hmm. I will definitely w hang out with those people because I think it's yeah. cute also. It was definitely, uh, it was cool to see him as little Michael. Yeah. I'll definitely not watch the movie the same after this. <laughs> and what's cool is that he's only three. So when Michael was what, six when uh, he killed his sister? So he's got a little while he's to be th little he's, Michael. He's three years ahead of the game. <clears throat> yeah, He's already ready to go. And we, I mean, we are re and we really appreciate people coming up to us to take photos. We really appreciate because I, used, I started off as taking the one taking photos, and I still am because there's cosplayers are amazing. Yeah. But um, having people do that to us was just, it was really fun. <clears throat> and it was cool for me as I was recording, uh, seeing every, trying to get everybody's reaction because everyone was reacting so positively to to this. Everyone was getting excited and. Like this girl right here, she is losing her marbles <laughs> at trying to get a photo. It's like, it's like, I don't know, Leo DiCaprio or something. She's just like, oh my God. It, and if you look, yeah. <laughs> she tells the other girl to go away. Right, yeah. Cause she like, didn't tell away. her. She go didn't away. tell her, yeah. She's literally saying, she's literally saying this. <laughs> she's shooing her away. Yeah. She, she didn't say, come and take this photo real quick with me. No. She went in there. Yeah. And, and then, then she's, she's like, like oh, get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Poor girl. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, we really appreciate it. And it's funny because at the Halloween, the 40th anniversary, um, and um, was it last year? And uh, we, uh, yes, last year. When we cosplayed, that was the first time me and him cosplayed like that. And we had people like Scout Compton and Tyler Maine coming out from behind their photo or their tables to take pictures with us. Yeah. And they're the ones charging for photos. And <laughs> so that was kind of you should have charged for a photo. Right. Uh, it's 30 bucks. <laughs> take it or leave it. <clears throat> um, and what's cool is that Scout came out from behind her table and sat down in Indian style and was just talking to Grayson and she was like cool that. she yeah. was cool and Tyler Maine as big as he is he's like he comes out and he's like can I can I pick him up I'm like yeah he ain't gonna break <laughs> <laughs> so I got a photo of him and he ain't gonna we'll, break <laughs> maybe we'll like pop that in real I quick love it of him just I holding up this it. doll it looks like a doll that he's holding because he's so massive but and that's cool I really wish some of the some of the Actors would have gotten as excited, but it was so crowded yeah. at this convention. This is the most crowded I've ever seen Monster Palooza. And this is at their bigger venue. And yeah, it's... this is at the Pasadena Convention Center, and it was packed to the gills. But they had they had what? They had um, Bruce Campbell, uh, Paul Rubens. They think they were, and those were probably some of their most, you know, yeah, the so biggest lines. They had a big a big crowd. I think probably more for uh, Bruce Campbell. But yeah. Same thing with Pee Wee. I mean, who doesn't love Pee Wee for right. sure? And that's one of the really cool things about the the crowds was that you had all different kinds of people. Yeah. You had people that looked like they were business people. You mm -hmm. had people that looked like they were, you know, taking a weekend from college to, to come and take a look at this. And you had the hardcore horror fans with the black t-shirts and the shaved heads and, and all of that. And then you had your, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill people. And that's, that's what's really cool mm -hmm. is that this is a, a genre that has a, a fan base across all different types of ages races genders everything and when you see that we're all coming together mm. for a common passion that was yeah. my big takeaway from this whole process was every single one of these people in their own way is into exactly what i'm into mm -hmm. they love it this is their way of expressing how much they love it and frank really loved these particular <clears throat> uh well, we're both big bus T2 fans. Oh, yeah. Um, and you, you can't get any more realistic than that. They, they were disgustingly realistic. Yeah. Like, and I was angry I couldn't take these home. Right. If I didn't mind going to jail, I would have just grabbed them. <laughs> and this, this, this He specifically Wilson, wanted to steal this one. Yeah, I mean, look at him. It looks like he's about to charge me for a photo. <laughs> $30. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> From Pan's Labyrinth. My son loved that one. It just looked so weird. And yeah. that one, I love these. Uh, this one, these yeah, because the, the bus displays, there are pieces of artwork in themselves. And yeah, this is by Elite Creature Collectibles. I don't even remember um, that. Yeah, I just didn't remember. Well, I, oh, I, yeah, I right, forgot, it says in the background. I forgot ECC. about ECC, yeah. Yeah, and look at this. You have a little George. A little George. You have yeah. a little shadow right there. And yeah, we did a couple 
po uh, posed photos for some folks. And, and this just goes to show how in character. Look at him. Look at that. Stone cold. Look at that. He wow. is in character. <laughs> Great yeah. moment. And, you know, it's and, actually a good way to close out the video because yeah. this was uh, towards the end of the day. He's and, actually got the, the, the look and the character down more than I have, actually. He does. I think he might have been watching these movies while you were uh, sleeping, and he actually caught on to the mannerisms a little bit better. I mean, he's probably watching us while we sleep, <laughs> which, is kind, of, which is kind of scary, but yeah. I don't know if I should be proud or scared. I don't know either. It's one of those two. I guess we'll have to figure that part <laughs> out. Um, but that's a good way of transitioning us actually to the dream child. Mm -hmm. like, like Grayson is the dream child, mm -hmm. kind of that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it was uh, the following Tuesday, we had mm -hmm. gone to the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5 screening yep. in yeah. Hollywood at the Chinese Six. We had gone to the Friday the 13th yeah. Part 2 at the same venue, same people that put it on Scream Fest, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, fears and Beers. Fears yeah. and Beers. Yeah, and that was cool. And Frank doesn't drink beer, so I drank his beer. Yeah, you got totally wasted. I got wasted on two cans of beer. I did not, by the way. Um, but yeah, Frank, what was your experience like? Um, I, always fun at these things. Uh, you know, seeing them on the big screen where you your focus is on, you have no point or no choice but to focus on these. So, oh, yeah. Uh, when you're watching them on, you know, I didn't watch these. I wasn't alive at the time or I wasn't, you know. And so I watched these on the on the TV, you know, like yeah, because these big. were late '80s. So yeah. even then, if you were, you know, even if you were you were around, you were probably too <laughs> you're, you're too right. small to remember. Yeah. So there, you know, you you get when you watch them on the little screen, the small screen, you get distracted. You don't catch a lot of the details. Um, that's but true. You have no no choice but to focus. Exactly. So. When you're in the theater, then that's exactly how it was intended to be seen by the filmmakers in that aspect ratio. Sometimes you watch them on like small TVs yeah. back in the days. Now everybody's got giant televisions, me included. Um, having the sole purpose of this is the only thing that you're focused on is watching this mm. movie in the dark with a bunch of people with this great sound. Mm. and. Yeah, it was funny, too, because then we got a chance to actually meet some of the celebrities. We got a chance to meet uh, Danny Hassel, who plays Dan, and then Lisa Wilcox, who plays Alice. Alice. Exactly. And we've, we've both met her uh, before. Yes. And she's always a sweetheart. So. And I got my VHS signs. Look at those. Look at those. Part four and part five. I was, I'm was i a bigger fan of part four. Me as well. So I, I took this one to go get signed just because that was the screening we were yeah. at, but this is the one I have so many great memories mm -hmm. watching, especially the sequence where it would loop and she'd be like, get in the yeah, car, the I'll drive. Scene. And it was just so, so to get these signed gave me chills, yes. I mean, look how pretty the artwork is alone. Horror I mean, nerd chills, yeah. But when, with, the, with the bright signatures that pop, I mean. You and they were free. Right. You can't beat that. Thank you, Scream Fest, mm -hmm. and thank you, Dan and uh, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Why am I blanking out on Lisa Wilcox's name? I don't know. But yeah, that was the best part of the free signatures because yeah. convention these days, sometimes the autographs will make you have to take out a loan. Yeah. So, yeah. So any last thoughts on the convention itself or the screening? Yeah. Uh, so the convention was on Saturday. The screening was on Tuesday. Yeah. So we had an opportunity to let that post-convention buzz kind of continue on into the rest of the week. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't stop. It didn't, it didn't stop. And that's the thing is that you, you, you know, the uh, horror nerds that have been to the conventions, you guys know what I'm talking about, that kind of rush that you get. Uh, that kind of euphoria that you get from having indulged in one of your your passions, uh, it, it it extends on and it just it, it, it makes your day and, and I'm so glad we had an opportunity to do that. And, yeah. um, but uh, we'll leave this off on the high note. So yeah. this is all the time that we have for today's episode. But uh, tune in for next week's episode because Frank's going to be discussing his top five creature features which are not animal-based creatures. Fictional creatures. Fictional creatures. So do you want to give us a, a hint as to which ones you're going to be talking about? No. You uh -oh. have to tune in to find out. Yeah, apparently, yeah. And Leo is also going to be giving his top five uh, non-mainstream non films. Yes. So not necessarily the most obscure titles uh, that maybe the diehard, diehard horror fan is like, you know, these are ones that no one knows about. So these aren't that deep, but these are kind of some of the ones that are off the mainstream. They're not Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, or uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or anything like that. So I'm really excited to share those with you guys. So And go ahead and uh, tell them what you're going to be talking about there. Uh, we're going to have to wait until next week to see what uh, which ones. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the two of you that watched last week's episode yeah. and the two of you that are watching this week's episode, make sure to tune in for next week's we episode. We appreciate your continued support. Yes, awesome. Thank you guys so much. See ya.